straight out of Jersey with Jersey Jay-Z. This Golden Gloves champion boxer hung up the gloves to become a pro wrestler. He won numerous titles in WCW as wrestler Johnny B. Bad and WWE as wild man Mark Marrow. He now travels the world inspiring millions to dream big and live a life of passion and purpose. Straight out of Jersey welcomes Mark Marrow. Welcome everybody to Straight Out of Jersey. I am Joe Zapata and my guest this week I'm very excited for he was bad. He was wild. And now he's an inspiration to our youth. Mark Merrill. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I appreciate the, the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had one of those in a while. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got to tell you, first of all, you must have found the fountain of youth because you look great. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. You know, I, I really believe that these uh, these kids keep me young, man. I feel that the energy you have to have to be around young people every day, man, it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. a blessing. Um, so let's start off because we have a lot of things in common you don't realize, you know, being from a single parent home. Uh, where did you grow up and how did you get into boxing? Um, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and my first love was hockey. I was a, I was a really good hockey player. And, uh, and when my, my parents got divorced, we lived on the west side of Buffalo, which was a really bad neighborhood, man. It was gang and drug infested. And, uh, uh, my mom actually got remarried, and then we moved to Syracuse area, we, uh, a suburb of Syracuse called Liverpool, New York. And that's where I started boxing, going down to the boxing gym. And um, and my career there took off also. You know, I won the New York State Golden Gloves uh, a few years in a row, gold medal in the Empire State Games. And then um, I made it to the USA boxing team where I moved to Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I trained there. And... Um, my brother was a box. My brother George is a boxer. Who's actually fighting on the twenty seventh. Um, you actually won the, uh, the Golden Gloves, correct? Four yes. Times? Yeah. Four times. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I won the New York State Golden Gloves. Um, I had a total of three state, three, three or four state titles in New York. And then four, why did you four, start? Actually. Because you were going to be pro, I believe, right? Yes. Uh, when I was on the USA boxing team, uh, it was been. I would have had to wait three years for the Olympics to come to, to make the team. And I decided that I was going to turn professional because I, I accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish as an amateur. And uh, two weeks before my first professional boxing match, I had my nose shattered in an accident and I needed reconstructive surgery. And the doctor said it would be almost like a year before I could go out and start really having full contact again. And it was in that time off, I just started making some really bad choices, you know? Oh, wow. We, we, um, we surround ourselves with and I started, yeah. I started hanging out with some bad dudes, man. You got into a little bit of bodybuilding, which I, I do. I love pro bodybuilders are my friends. You got into bodybuilding, correct? I did. I did for for a year. I was late. It was uh, 1989. I, I entered the uh, Mr. New York State bodybuilding competition. I came in third, but, I, you know, I did okay in it. Mm -hmm. You have a great body. I mean, you do. I mean, you did, you know, everything you have. Um, oh, hush, Joey. Stop winking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bad man. Yeah. Um, that, or wrestling. You said you're a bad man. What, why wrestling? What happened? You know, it was nothing I planned on doing. What happened was, man, after I went through a really hard time, years and years of drug addiction, and uh, I had a bunch of friends over my apartment, and one of my buddies was flipping through the TV channels, and he landed on professional wrestling. And as I'm looking at it, and I remember I was always a good athlete, football player, hockey player, boxer, and I, I'm looking at this on television. I go, hey, guys, I can do that. My buddies busted out laughing because it was like the road birds <laughs> were on TV or someone, you know. They go, look at the size of those guys. We'll pick you up their head and you right out of that ring. I said, I'm telling you, I can do that. My buddy goes, Mark, you're 30 years old. What do you do? Start a pro career now? And, man, I just found out where there was a wrestling school. I was living in Venice, Florida, and there was a wrestling school in Tampa, about 60 miles apart or so. And I started driving there after work on weekends. It was a Malenko pro wrestling school. Uh, Dean Malenko? Dean and Joe's dad, um, yep. Boris Malenko, you know. Boris. And so he trained me, and um, and then um, I was I would drive with the guys up to Atlanta to see if we got picked up picked for television to get beat up by the superstars, you know. Mm -hmm. and of course, when Dusty saw me, he liked the way I looked, and uh, he chose me. And um, one thing led to another, and and he said to me, "Hey, kid, anybody ever tell you you look like Little Richard?" And I thought he was talking about a wrestler, so I said, "I never heard of Little Richard." He goes. You don't know Little Richard or Womp Baba Luke? Or not. <laughs> I go, oh, the singer. I said, I never heard that. He goes, I think I got a gimmick for you. And that's how Johnny B. Bad was born. 
Have you ever met Little Richard by any chance? I never have, but I've seen. Uh, I, I the, the coolest thing was after you know he, he used to hold up a, pe a poster of me and he'd say things like, "They say he's pretty. He's not as pretty as me." And he'd rip up the poster, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I actually got uh, through through Facebook. I got a message to, to, from his driver that told me how much he enjoyed the, the the character and how when i came on television how he would get laughing and he really he really enjoyed it so that was really nice to hear because i never knew if he he liked it or not you know mm -hmm. uh, imitation great. form of flattery you know that's great so you start wcw and then dusty gives you immediate push to johnny be bad did that really yeah I, well you know i was so green at wrestling i mean it was like oh, so new to me and um, people always think that like, because you're a boxer, you have a really good punch, but it was the complete opposite because remember, I'm just throwing shoot punches and now I'm going to learn how to throw a working punch. So they, they put me out there with guys like to start out, they put me out there with like um, uh, 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 Johnny, Johnny Polo, Raven, he eventually Raven, Raven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he helped me out a lot. Um, guys like um, Arn Anderson, uh, Ricky Morton guys that were seasoned veterans, man, that really helped me and learned to become a better worker. And um, and then, you know, I, I the first year I was Rookie of the Year. The next year I was Most Improved Wrestler. So I really took it out. I really enjoyed it, and I got better and better. And then I wanted to drop all the feminine qualities about Johnny Bet, Johnny Bet, make it kind of more of a cool, like, Muhammad Ali character, you know? Mm -hmm. And, of course, yeah. Dusty fought me <laughs> tooth and nail with that, but eventually he, he gave in. I would... uh. You know, the gorilla position is right before you go out to the audience. Mm -hmm. yep. And Dusty would be sitting there, and I'd come up, and I wouldn't have the makeup on. And he goes, you go put color on right now. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> I'd go back and put lipstick on and eyeliner and everything, you know. And he goes, oh, you're so pretty. You know, Dusty was the best. <laughs> now, did, is it true you had a little bit of when you – I guess you were very green at the time, but you had a problem with Butch Reed? I'm sorry? You, when you were a little bit green at the time, but you had a problem with natural Butch Reed? Butch Reed. Um, no, what, what, what happened, that was one of my first matches oh, ever. Okay. They put me in a tag team match, uh, me and another gentleman against uh, uh, Butch Reed. You know, we were guys were just going to get beat up. Mm -hmm. And what happened in the match was, this was when Dusty actually said first to me after I met him, well, what happened, let me get back a little bit, was the match went and they do that thing off the top rope where they, they I get up on one of their shoulders and they clothesline me off the top and yep. they do pick one, two, three. And being it was my first time there and everything, I didn't really – I thought that because I got pinned, I better get out of the ring and give them the space, you know, not mm -hmm. knowing I'm supposed to lay there like I'm dead, you know, mm -hmm. very foolish. And uh, so anyways, there was two dressing rooms. There was the superstars dress room at center stage. And then there was the, the, the enhancement guys, the jobbers that were dressed together in another big dressing room. And it was customary for when one of the superstars would, you know, a beat with the job or would come over and just, Hey, good match. Thanks for, you know, doing the job from here or whatever. It was just a nice thing. You know, they'd come over to our dress room and just thank us or whatever. And uh, so after the match, I had no clue. I'm in my dress room and I, I'm waiting for them to come over and thinking they're going to come over and shake my hand or something, you know, and say good job. Cause the, other than that, the match went fairly well. Uh, but they did lay in their punches and kicks. I have to admit, you know, I'm not <laughs> it's not fake. It didn't feel fake. <laughs> so, anyways, I hear before they even got there, um, f this, f that, and Butch Reed is just furious. Lambs the door open, you, and they just come at you, mfr, you know, and he's just cutting promo on me. And I go, what? He goes, when we beat you, you lay in the ring like you are dead. You don't move. And right then I realized what I did wrong and I just started apologizing. I, I am so sorry from my heart. I mean, I was like, man, I am so sorry. I, I will never do that again, man. I just, big mistake. And he wouldn't stop though. He's like, F you, you piece of this and that. And then, you know, like anyone, you can only get pushed so far before you just say, fuck you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we put up our dudes and we're ready to go at it. And, and it was Sid Vicious who kind of stepped between us. And Sid acted like he knew me. He was going, oh, Butch, he's a good guy, man. You know, cool, calm down. And, you know, we, everything got smoothed out, you know. And uh, then Sid said something like, yeah, I'm going to have you wrestle me next time we're at center stage, you know. And we were, it was really cool. And, you know, of course, they finally realized that I was green. And I, I, I really meant my apologies for it. I wasn't trying to make anybody look bad or never would do that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it got all smoothed out after that. And, you know, and, me and obviously Ron had a great history together, you know, mm -hmm. uh, actually winning the, the Intercontinental title uh, mm -hmm. in the tournament against him. And um, 
just a great guy and, and a great friend, you know, like I, whenever mm -hmm. I, I get a big smile on my face because people don't realize he's a funny guy, man. Is he? Is he really? I love hanging out with him backstage because he, he's a funny guy. He's just a serious, funny guy that can just, you would think he's being serious, but he's really funny, you know? Oh, wow. Now, when you came in, you were um, a heel at first, correct? Yes. And then they changed you to baby face after a couple of things. Right? Well, you know, I really invested in my character, you know, and mm -hmm. started getting the confetti gun and the Frisbees and the kiss that don't miss and all these little things that people are like, oh, you know, they may hate you, but they enjoy watching you, you know. So uh, my, my, my ratings or my Q rating back then was pretty good because people wanted to see whether they loved your age or they wanted to watch you. Mm -hmm. um, do you prefer heel or baby? Um, you know, I... If I really had fuse, I mean, it was fun going back to especially, you know, being Marvelous Mark Merrill because of the feud I was in with, with Sable back then. So that was, mm -hmm. that was, like, that was so easy because I, I had to do much, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I guess being a baby face is, is, is more joke because it relates to what I do outside the ring. Too. Yes. Did you enjoy your time in WCW? Man, that was the best time it was. And, you know, some of my greatest memories are becoming Johnny B. Bad is spending so much time with Dusty. Spending time with the dream because he'd always get there early and he'd work with me. He says, now I want you to walk like this and talk like this and then look at the camera and go, I'm a bad man. <laughs> and I'm so pretty. You know, he'd have, <laughs> and I'd watch him do it. And I used to crack up so much watching Dusty Rhodes be Johnny be bad. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, you why did you leave WCW all in all to go? To well, WWF? you know, the, the truth is that you never really – went to the dance until you wrestled at WrestleMania, you know, and I always knew I'd end up my career there. And I met Vince three years before I even went there and had dinner at his house. And we discussed me going there and I told him I need a guaranteed contract. And he said, we don't give out guarantees. We give out opportunities. And I said, no, I got, I got a guaranteed deal here. So I stayed there for another three years. And then my contract was up again, met with Vince. And he says, what's it going to take to bring you to WWE? And I said, Vince, guaranteed contract he thought about it he goes all right yep. and you were the first yeah i was the, the first, first yeah but it, 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 it broke the glass ceiling and you know yeah. a lot of people a lot of people hated me for it but you know when, I, mm -hmm. when I, you look back and how it opened the door for everyone to get a guaranteed contract eventually then you came in and you were wrestling all the big names triple h stone cold I mean, who, who was your favorite to, to get in the ring with that you enjoyed? Well, you know, guys like Stone Cold, because we wrestled each other so many times. We had really good chemistry because, remember, we, we were he was stunning Steve in WCW yes. for all the years mm -hmm. I was there. Mm -hmm. Years together there. Then going to WWE, I was there for uh, three or four years. And so wrestling him so many times in, 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 in like, house shows and in your house or pay-per-views in WCW, Slambury, and, and then, of course, King of the Ring and – you know, so we had a pretty good chemistry. I enjoyed working with him. And then uh, Triple H, because I wrestled with him in WCW and WWE. So we, I'm wrestling these guys 150, 200 times, you know, totally, you know. So mm -hmm. having pretty good chemistry with them. And um, so I, I really um, enjoyed that, um, working with guys that were I could learn from, you know. Uh, Steve Regal, um, Diamond Dales Page, and I would go to the wrestling camp together, uh, the, the power plant after you know to, to work out our, our matches and work out new moves and things like that we were really passionate about becoming better as wrestlers uh during this time the brawl for all happens and and to be honest with you i, I thought you were going to win because you're the boxer with your background yeah. and, and i saw the fight with you and jbl i thought you won but i don't know how the yeah. rules were in that went down what happened during that what do you think about it well, I mean, the, the thing was, is remember, when I was a boxer, I, I was between, I was 16 and 19 years old, you know, mm -hmm. I had this incredible speed and power. Now, fast forward, I'm not even making excuses. I've had, I've had five shoulder surgeries, five oh, wow. elbow surgeries, never had the speed of the power I had as, as a youngster, you know, but I still mm -hmm. could, like, if you notice in, in all my matches, I never got hit in the face. I, I could slip nope. punch really easy, but mm -hmm. I just kept getting taken down. I never had no takedown defense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's something you work on in the boxing <laughs> ring. <laughs> um, so, but JBL and I, we did not like each other back then, you know. And uh, he, he was, a, you know, rather a bully, and I didn't like him. And, and when I did wrestle him, he really laid him in and, and tried to hurt me. And so, when it came to fight him, I was like really excited to fight him. I was like, you know, I don't care mm -hmm. if he's like a foot taller and 100 pounds bigger. I it was like David and Goliath. I, I'm going to beat him, you know. But I got to tell you, you know. Um, 
it, it, we went three rounds and they called it a draw. So we had to go and do one more round. And uh, I, I mean, I thought I won, but you know, it doesn't even matter now. I don't even care. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, JBL and I are friends now. And that's the okay. main He's a good dude, man. I mean, you know, whatever happened back then is water under the bridge. And it's funny because when you go to these wrestling conventions, you see guys you haven't seen in years that maybe you weren't even friends with back then. There's a camaraderie that's like an unspoken word that, man, we did something really cool together, you know? Mm -hmm. There's very few guys that are hold grudges like that. But uh, JBL and I, have, we, we, we've corresponded on, 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 on Twitter or X. And, um, you know, we're both proud of what each other is doing now. And so it's really cool, man, to, to have him as a friend now, as an ally, and uh, don't have to fight him anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, that's true. I did hear he was a bully from a lot of people. Well, you know, back then uh, there was guys there, you know, there was cliques and things like that. And, you know, this is the way it goes. Did you prefer WCW or WWE better? Well, you know, looking back on my career, I wouldn't have changed anything only because all the paths I took in life led to right where I am today. And I couldn't be happier, proud of of, of who I am and, and what I'm accomplishing now outside of wrestling. Uh, but if I, if I had to say where I enjoyed it the most was WCW because I had more of a camaraderie with the guys because, you know, going to WWE, I, I brought my wife with me. So I'm always eating with her, spending time with her, you know, at, at, at the, at the um, you know, we were always together, traveling together, mm -hmm. working out together. So I didn't really have the camaraderie I had with WCW guys that I did with the WWE guys. Mm. So that was a little bit harder, but um, and looking back, obviously the character Johnny B. Bad was a lot more fun. I never really connected with Wild Man. I didn't really get the whole character when they gave me that that yeah. character, Wild Man Mark Merrill. It was like I didn't really understand it. And I remember in the in the in the um, creative meeting, Vince said to me, "Can you do a Tarzan yell?" I'm thinking I, I have a really scratchy <laughs> voice. I'm not like like I could sting or or you know. Mm. Uh, or Ric Flair or something that could do that woo, real loud. I couldn't do it. So I said, I don't got the voice to do that. He goes, well, what do you think of wild man Mark Merrill? And I was like, what's a wild man? <laughs> am I crazy? Am I from the jungle? What, what am I? He goes, like, from the jungle. You know, and I was like, oh, okay. But, you know, looking back, I'm thinking they know what they're talking about. They've developed so many stars. They obviously know something I don't know. So I'm I'm gonna play with them. I mean, play play the game. Just you know, do the do what I'm supposed to do. I get a big guaranteed contract, big signing bonus. I get to bring my wife on the road. I got everything I've asked for. Let's not ruffle feathers, you know. Mm -hmm. So I agreed to do the the wild man, and and I just never really connected with it. Therefore, the fans don't really connect with it. And um, uh, but then it, it all turned around when I became marvelous, Mark Merrill, and uh, you know had the feud with Sable, and and now I'm bringing her. Up because she's always coming mm -hmm. out on top and she became so mm -hmm. popular back then. Uh, you know, I got to ask you, you know, Vince McMahon, he's been in the papers recently. Um, I hope he does well, whatever he's got to go through. But what do you, how was your relationship with him? Was he nice to you and everything? Vince? Oh, man, I, I, I never had a problem with Vince. I mean, I had dinner at his house uh, a couple times and uh, he was always really cordial to me. I mean, and, and he's a businessman. Yep. I made a lot of money with, with Vince McMahon, you know, I mean, to have the first guaranteed contract. And then I blew out my knee and I'm out for eight months. I'm getting paid, you know, the, the same every single week, you know. Wow. And, and so, you know, a lot of people criticize me for um, letting Sable kind of beat me up and stuff like that. Remember, all the moves she does, I, I taught her. I worked with her in the ring and taught her those moves. But people don't realize that I'm getting paid the same no matter what, whether I'm up or down. Mm -hmm. She's getting paid. Um, a, a small, small amount. But so let me get her over and she's going to make a lot more money, which she did. She did. Dollars. Yes, she did. Um, after wrestling, you went through some dark times. Yeah. Can, can you speak about that? What happened? Sure, man. Cause I talk about it in my presentations, mm -hmm. you know, when wrestling ended and I went through a, a, a tough divorce, but I also lost family members, you know, during this time that, um, my my little brother and sister died at 21. My my mom died at 58. My dad died in my arms. Wow. It was just a tough time, and and then going through the divorce with 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 Rena uh, Sable, and uh, it was a really dark dark place. And uh, you know, I, I never blame her. I never you know um, point fingers or anything like that. And what happened happened. And but I just got so dark. And then I got back into drugs and got darker and darker than making horrible financial decisions and just partying and 
and you know flying people all over the place having fun and next thing you know you're you're broke you're 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 high you're, you're messed up you just want to end it all and if it wasn't for the grace of god i wouldn't be here today but it gives me a, a platform and a story to help other people. I've been 20 years clean now, man. You know, wow, congrats. it's been an wow. incredible journey. And um, I, I love helping people, man. There's no greater joy in my life than helping someone else. You were working at Gold's Gym, correct? Gold's Gym you were working at? Yeah, you know, that's, that was my first kind of my comeback after I, I got off everything. And, and um, I had to get a job. You know, I had no money. And I got a job at, at Gold's Gym. And I remember, you know, it was kind of humbling because people would come in Gold's Gym and they'd say, Oh my gosh, Mark Merrill. They go, what are you doing here? And I go, I work here. And they go, you work at Gold's Gym? <laughs> like, you know, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. you're simply just working out here, not working here. But uh, long story short, I became a, a personal trainer, which I really enjoyed. And my, 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 my clients got really good results. And it led to me um, opening up my own little personal training studio, this little tiny gym. And I, I had a few trainers with me and that, that place kind of took off. But then what happened was one of the, Local because I was doing I was I was on a lot of TV shows the news when you know when uh, Chris Benoit uh, had his issues yes mm-hmm. and uh, so I was on the news quite a bit so a lot of people saw me in this one of the schools that wasn't too far from me Melbourne High School their football coach contacted me at the gym that I had and he said would you come and talk to our players and I said sure and we set up a time and. The kids really liked it, and it was cool because I got some emails from the students saying, man, that really inspired me, man. We're going to go out and win the championship this year. And, and unbeknownst to me, that that coach called another school and goes, hey, we just had Mark Merrill here. He did a heck of a job with our students. They go, well, we'd like to have him speak to the whole school. And it snowballed, man. One school called another. And then, of course, um, I was doing schools in Atlanta. And, of course, Diamond Dale's Page lives here. He's one of my closest mm-hmm. friends. Mm-hmm. So I would stay with Dallas when I came to town. And I was doing a school near, near DDP's home, and he said, hey, Mark, would you mind if we send the, the film crew down to film you at the school? And uh, I said, sure, because we get photo and video releases from the schools before we go there, and they mm-hmm. sign on it and stuff. And some schools do, some schools don't, but most of okay. them do. And the school signed off on that, so we were able to have a, a video crew come down. And... Uh, Oh, a couple of weeks later, DDP calls me because, hey, bro, the guys put together this five minute video. Do you mind if we put it up on YouTube? I said, sure. He goes, you never know. It might go viral. Man, that video has been seen by millions and millions of people. And not only that, it opened so many doors for me where mm-hmm. I remember the first time that video went viral, we had 3,000 booking requests in the first month. Wow. And we had a crew of five people working for us, scheduling and, and, coordinating my schedule. I did 295 or 293 events that year. Just a wow. Cool. This before COVID, obviously? Probably. Yeah, before, obviously, yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead. But so I was averaging 230 a year, eventually, you know, it was wow. that tapered up. Well, it's just crazy. I could have done a lot more, but I, I just, mm-hmm. just couldn't. The, the schedule was just grueling. And not only that, when you're doing two, three, four, five a day, you're taking on a lot of heartache, too, because there's so many kids that write to you and say, you know, I wanted to kill myself. I'm I'm depressed. I'm getting bullied. And then you have to sort them out and, and, and then find the counselors or therapists that you can work with at the schools. And it's a lot of back and forth. And it just really takes its toll on you because you spend so many hours after your presentation working with kids. So I got very little sleep. And But it was my it was my joy in life, man, was helping so many of these kids. And, and now I only do about 120 events a year, which people would think that's a lot. But for me, it's 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 where I want to be right now because I want to spend more time at home, um, more time around my family, and I got a little rescue dog who turned 14 and a half now, and, mm-hmm. and I just uh, want to be with him, you know, as much as possible before he leaves. Mm-hmm. Uh, you even traveled to Russia, am I right? I did, man. I did. I did wow. a week worth of schools and churches in Russia, and it was incredible, man. You know, in the same issues they have there as that we have here, mm-hmm. and. They, just wanted to hug you and high five you and you know I, of course i use a translator and it was amazing he was such an amazing translator because his emotion during my presentation he'd cry almost every day um when he's doing the presentation the kids were weeping and it was such emotional and then i spoke at their rehab centers out there and it was a, a trip i will never forget but we've been you know now since then we've been to guatemala puerto rico it's just been incredible and that's uh, the you know champions of choices that's what you created it afterwards. Correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Correct. Uh, out of the wrestling, the boxing, 
is this the most rewarding what you're doing right oh, now? No, no question, man. It's not, not even, I mean, wrestling is like entertainment. This mm -hmm. is life changing, man. This is something where, you know, I'll have a legacy to leave behind. It's not going to be how big my house was or how much money I had or what kind of car I drove. It's the, the difference I made in someone else's life. And that's, that's what I enjoy so much, you know, and, and I'll do it as long as I can, you know, as long mm -hmm. as I, the kids are still enjoying it and they're still getting something out of it. I will keep going. Uh, I'm friends with a lot of the boys and Rick Steiner told me, I think you went to his kid's school. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, Bron, I got a picture of Bron from, from his, 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 uh, he was, I think it was like a sophomore junior school. He was a little guy. <laughs> we got a picture together. And now I got a picture with him with, as, as Bron Breaker. It's like just incredible what he has done. And we, we, we keep in touch through social media and, uh, I love that guy. He's a, he's a really, he's a good person. Real good person. Yeah. One of your most, and I've seen it on YouTube and I've watched it a million times. One of your most powerful is your mother's day emotional sort of. Yeah. Can you try to just go that for my audience? That, that story. I mean, it's so beautiful. Everything. Well, you know, um, when I was in my drug phase, you know, and going through some really hard times, I would come home. My, my buddies would drop me off, you know, I'm staying with my mom and, and, uh, she, you know, she knew I was in drugs and everything, and she did she prayed for me all the time. And and all she wanted me to do was talk to her. You know, like when I call, like whenever I came in the house, she says, "Hey, honey, um, can you chat for a minute?" And I blow her off, you know. But I remember she when I came home this particular night was uh, drunk and high, and it was like three, four in the morning, you know. And I, I and my, we pulled up in front of my house, and all the lights were already on. And my buddies would go, "Man, your lights are on." I go, "Yep, yeah, my mother's up." And I remember walking in, I seen her face. She was so relieved to see me that I was okay. And she says, hi, hon, how was your night? And I was like, it was good, mom, I'm just going to bed. She goes, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? I go, mom, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. And she said, Mark, I haven't seen you all day or all night. Can I please talk to you? I said, man, why don't you just leave me alone? You know, you bug me. And I'd slam my bedroom door on the one person who believed in me. And I remember, you know, how hard looking back on that was with her because she loved me so much. And, um, and then of course I get into wrestling and then I'm in Japan when she passes away. I mean, she was only 58 Wow! and it just hit me. It's like, I would do anything. I would give up everything just to talk to her now, you know? And, um, I don't know it resonates well with students because I can't tell you how many parents write to me and say, "My kid came home from school today." You know, mm -hmm. and, you know, she loves me. Or we got a funny one the other day. It was a mother said um, she goes, "My daughter came home from school today, and she said I want to start having dinner with you and dad, and she's being nice to her little brother." What the hell did you say? <laughs> so <laughs> it was always great to get. Yeah. You know, I heard, is it true you almost had a TV pilot? Is that true? Yeah. Um, well, this was back in WCW. Oh, uh, okay. Barry, Barry Vigon, who wrote Seinfeld, wrote the pilot for me and Little Richard. Little Richard playing my father in the pilot. And really? I play a wrestler who's on the road who owns a gym. And Little Richard runs the gym and gets in all kinds of trouble when I'm on the road. So it was a really funny pilot, but uh, it never got picked up or, or went anywhere. Where do you want people, to, when they think of your name, how do they want to remember you by you know like i said earlier um the difference i made in someone else's life nothing about what i accomplished but what i what what i did for somebody else you know that's the greatest gift you can leave behind is knowing you 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 made a difference you you were mm -hmm. you were here for a reason mm -hmm. um so where can people you know donate or give to you know, the, your charity, if they, the, the nonprofit um, foundation. Well, all the money goes to, to present at schools. You know, schools Correct. don't all have very much money or, or no money for, for mm -hmm. our thing. And obviously traveling all over is very expensive, you know. Uh, but if you just go to uh, Think Pause, and Pause is P-O-Z, like Zebra, thinkpause.org. Mm -hmm. And you can um, see my upcoming schedule. In fact, I'm coming to see you. So you're in coming New to Jersey. Jersey. You're coming to Jersey. <laughs> Next week, I'm in New Jersey doing a couple of schools on the 18th, and I'm looking forward to it. I love coming to New Jersey, man. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm yeah. trying to get Dallas to come on, but he's been busy because he's a Jersey guy. I know he is. I know. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, he told me he me and, me and Dallas had a Me and Dells had a gauntlet not too long ago, a couple weeks ago, and he's like, 
dude, I got these power cups. I want you to use them in your workout. Mm -hmm. And I had to do the cold plunge. I had to do the oxygen tanks on the bike. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, dude, are you trying to kill me? You know, we are so competitive. Like we have this competition who can do the most push-ups all the time. And it goes back and forth, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, DDP push-ups are, are really, they're, they're like a 30 second push-up, 10 seconds up, 10 seconds down and hold it. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. touch, don't just hold it, and 10 seconds up, 10 seconds, you know. So it's, it's really 30-second push-ups. They call them 10-second push-ups. So we've been going back and forth, you know, and it's like when one beats the other, we go psycho, and we have to get the title back, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> I finally beat that son of a gun. <laughs> and, and we do it nose to nose. Like, we're looking right at each other doing it, like, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have so much fun, though. But uh, right now he's got the title back, and I got to – I got to – Reclaim it sooner or later. Have you were you there with Marcus? Was there Marcus Bagwell? Um, Marcus, you know, he was at the accountability crib for quite a while, and yes. uh, uh, we we all got together the day before Thanksgiving. We had our own Thanksgiving with a bunch of the guys at the house, and so mm -hmm. I got to spend some time with Marcus and Scotty Riggs and and uh, you know uh, Butterbean, and it was just a, a lot of fun. Is Jake is still there. I'm sorry. Uh, is Jake still there? Jake. Uh, no, Jake. Jake. Uh, I think Jake. Mm -hmm lives some he doesn't i don't think he lives in atlanta anymore no i, I but i don't but I mean, I've seen Jake many times at ddp's house and we yeah. worked out together and and good friend it is too man he's mm -hmm. a good dude man he i'm, I'm just trust to have people in my life that you know uh we become what we surround ourselves with so when you're around a lot of positive people man you have, you have no no other place to go but uh, yeah, and dallas is the most positive person I oh would, man I, he's really i tell you we out inspire each other man we get together it's crazy you two are one fourth you and him would be some force together yes yeah, uh, we have a lot of fun together mm -hmm. well you make when you talk to dallas you make sure he says hey you got to come on jay-z show i'll you know? tell i will tell him jersey joe yeah. i will make sure he gets on your show well, Mark, uh, I appreciate your time. I thank you so much. You know, keep doing what you're doing. You're so great with the kids. And when you come to Jersey, you know, that's going to be the best for those kids. Thank you so well, much. Hey, hit, hit me up uh, Hit me up when we're off the show and let me know if you want to come to the event in New Jersey. I'd love to see you, man. Okay, yeah, definitely. Right. I was going to ask you, but I didn't want to, you know. I yeah, no, I'd love to. Come as my guest, man. Bring whoever you want. Just let me know who's coming and come as my guest, okay? Thank you so much, Mark. Love your brother. Be good, okay? Uh, no, so no. I'm a bad man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. God bless you, brother.